Hi everyone, welcome back to my project box. So in today's video I'd like to discuss the NS Panel Pro from Sonoff. Now it's quite a nice little device really, it, it can fit into a standard light switch box and um, it's, it's kind of a master control panel for all your smart devices in your house so you don't have to use your phone if you don't want to, it's got a touch screen and it's, it's a really cool little device that runs on Android, lots of possibilities there. But it's, it's very different in some ways to its pre predecessor, the NS Panel. Uh, because the NS Panel had two dedicated light switch buttons on it, so it could replace a two-gang light switch directly. Um, but the NS Panel Pro does not have any built-in relays, so it doesn't have any outputs. So it just gets a live and neutral supply to power it. So it can't actually directly replace a light switch on a wall. So if you have an existing light switch on the wall and you take it out, if you wired it in, you would lose that light on the ceiling or wherever, whichever light it was controlling. So I'm, I want to see in this video if it is possible to still um, take out an existing light switch on a wall and directly replace that light switch with the NS Panel Pro. And one possible solution to that um, problem is to maybe use a smart bulb because obviously the NS Panel Pro can control a smart bulb. So you just uh, swap out that light in the ceiling with a smart bulb. Um, and the NS Panel Pro can also control something like a Sonoff Mini R4 or something similar, some sort of Zigbee smart switch. Um, so technically, I guess it, it is possible. So we'll explore those options in this video. Um, and then another thing I'd like to explore as well is Obviously, if you have a neutral beyond your light switch box, that's great because this device needs a neutral to operate. But in many cases, you don't. And it's not always simple or easy to pull a neutral down uh, to your light switch box. So I've actually uh, designed brand new no neutral modules that can provide a virtual neutral. So this device can still be installed into a standard light switch box, even if there's no neutral, neutral connection available. So we'll look at those circuits as well, and we'll, uh, I'll, I'll show them in the video, demonstrate them, and also the circuit diagrams of how they work. So you can try and replicate it yourself if you like. Now let's take a look at a diagram of a light bulb connected to a light switch. And we have our neutral looping through the light switch box to the light bulb. So it's quite handy that we have our neutral connection behind the light switch box and we can pick up the live as well. So we can connect that up to our NS Panel Pro to power it. So we can disconnect the switch and take the switch live and the live, join them together and put them into the live in terminal behind our NS Panel Pro. The neutrals also go together and go into the neutral in terminal on the NS Pro. Now we can remove our light bulb and replace it with a smart bulb because it is permanently powered now and can be controlled by the NS Panel Pro. So now it's time to wire this into our light switch and light bulb mock-up. So we can swap out that standard LED light bulb with this smart bulb from Sonoff. And now we can pull out the light switch to reveal the fact that we have a neutral connection, which is handy, we need that. And we have our live feed and our switch live coming from the switch. So now we can remove the live and the switch live from the switch. And these can be put together to be our live supply for the NS Panel Pro. So let's stick those two wires into our live in terminal on our NS Panel Pro. And finally, there's a terminal block with the neutrals looping through it. We'll take off the terminal block and we stick those wires straight into the neutral input on our NS Panel Pro. Using brute force and ignorance, we will shove all the wires into the back of the box and put the Sonoff in place and switch the power back on to boot up the Sonoff. And just like that, the NS Panel can replace a light switch and turn it on and off just like a normal light switch can. Hooray, it works. We can even change the color tone of the bulb and we can adjust the brightness and turn it on and off. Excellent. Now, if you don't want to use a smart bulb because you want to use your original light fixture with its original bulbs, um, you can always use something like a Sonoff Mini up by the light fixture itself. 
That way, the Mini R4 can control the original light fixture and no smart bulb is required then. The R4 just goes in line with the live-in neutral feeding the light. The live supply feeds the live-in on the R4 and then comes back out of the output feeding the light. The neutral then loops through the neutral terminal on the R4 and then goes straight to the light. You don't have to use both neutral terminals on the R4, but you can loop in one and out the other if you like. So let's demonstrate this on the mock-up with a normal LED light bulb. So we'll leave the NS Panel Pro just connected as it is, and we'll simply connect the Mini R4 in line with the light bulb. So we start by disconnect the live and neutral feed from the light bulb holder, and then we add a short little neutral wire, and a short little live out wire that wires to the live out terminal of the Sonoff Mini. Then we simply connect those two little wires to the live and neutral terminals going directly to the light bulb. And now the old live and neutral wires from the light bulb go directly into the Sonoff Mini into live in and neutral in. And this is what powers our Mini R4. And with the power back on, the NS panel boots up nicely. And we can press the Mini's test button to see if the light comes on. And now the NS Pro can control the Sonoff Mini, which can control the light bulb. I guess this proves the NS Panel Pro can act like a normal light switch to turn your existing light fixture on and off, like magic. So now it's time to address the elephant in the room. What happens if this neutral connection behind the light switch simply wasn't there? I mean, it's not always easy to pull it down if it's not there. So, as promised, I'll show you my solution for if you don't have a neutral behind the light switch box and you have no way of getting it there. So here is my brand new prototype circuit specifically designed for the NS Panel Pro. It allows it to be powered without a neutral behind the switch box. It allows both the smart bulb and the NS Panel Pro to be permanently powered. It works by using a set of diodes to steer one half of the AC sine wave, creating the neutral return path back through the old switch live wire back to the smart bulb. The smart bulb gets its permanent supply from the other half of the sine wave in the same way, but kind of in reverse in the opposite direction. So now the old switch live wire can supply both the neutral to the NS Panel Pro and the live supply to the smart bulb using alternate halves of the sine wave. I've also added capacitors to smooth out the ripply waveforms so that the NS Panel gets a nice smooth power supply this also gets rid of the ripple on the smart bulb side, so it has a smooth power supply, so you don't get any unwanted flickering either. Each capacitor has its own inrush limiting resistor. This limits the large current spike when the capacitors first charge up. It helps to prolong the life of the capacitor and the diodes. Okay, that's the theory. Let's see how these modules can be used in practice. I spent some time trying to miniaturize these modules and to make them as robust as possible. They really are quite tiny no bigger than a terminal block, they can easily fit behind any light switch or up by the light fixture. So we'll start by disconnecting our permanent live supply from the light switch and connecting it to our neutral splitter live in with the connector block. Next we'll disconnect the switch live from the light switch and connect it via the neutral block to our switch live input on the neutral splitter module. Now it's simply a matter of connecting the NS Panel Pro We'll hook up the live and virtual neutral from our little module. Using nothing but brute force and ignorance, we jam everything into the back box. Now we can fit our bypass module in line with our light fixture. I'll just use this quick connector block to connect to the one side of my modules, neutral and switch live. And now we disconnect our switch live and connect it up to our bypass module. And we do the same with our neutral supply and connect it up to our bypass module using our quick connector. And then the output of our bypass module connects straight up to our light fixture. We then need to replace our standard light bulb with a smart bulb so that the NS panel can control it. So with the power back on, we have full control over our smart bulb. We can now adjust the brightness and turn it on and off and all the usual fun things. 
Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Definitive proof that you don't need a neutral connection behind the light switch to power the NS Panel Pro using my no neutral circuit. Now, I'd just like to mention that it's super, super important that both modules need to be connected first before the power is restored. If you just connected one of them at a time and, and then restored the power, you'd have a dead short. So both have to be connected first before you restore the power. Now, if you still want to go down the no neutral route, but you don't want to use a smart bulb and want to use your original light fixture, I've made a special no neutral module that works with the Sonoff Mini. It's configured slightly differently because you can't switch smooth DC through the relay contacts because it will damage them. You can switch half wave rectified DC because it's pulsed and won't damage the relay contacts. So instead the smoothing capacitor is connected directly to the load. So it's on the output of the Sonoff Mini. That way the ripple is still reduced to the LED light bulb. So we already have the NS Panel Pros module to provide the neutral in place. So now we'll connect our new module to the Sonoff Mini. It has lots of wires, but it makes all the convenient connections for us. So we simply connect the modules live out and live in and neutral to the Mini R4. The rest of the module simply goes in line with the old switch line and neutral and the existing light fixture. Now we simply disconnect our neutral and switch live from our light fixture and we connect it to our neutral input and switch live input on our module. And then the module's output wires connect straight to our light fixture. So let's switch the power back on so we can see if it works. Well, what do you know? We have a no neutral light switch and you get to keep your original ceiling light. Now, just for kicks, I thought I'd test it with one of these flat LED um, ceiling light panels just to see how well it works with that. Something different from a boring old LED light bulb. It just kind of illustrates that it works with different types of LED ceiling lights. And it is obviously possible to have multiples of these down lights connected to one bypass module. And some voice control. Switch on the garage lights. Switch off the garage lights. Now if your circuit breaker is larger than 5 amps, it might be a good idea to add an inline fuse with the live. So that brings me to my next point. Um, I wanted to choose quite large diodes that could survive a possible circuit breaker trip. Um, but I also wanted to make this thing as small as possible. So I thought if I could find a, a double diode package where there's two diodes connected in series in one component, then I could miniaturize these things even more. But I just couldn't find exactly what I was looking for. But then it dawned on me, you can use a bridge rectifier and you can reconfigure it to be two inline diodes. All you have to do is bridge out the two AC terminals and you have two inline diodes put in parallel, which act like one set of inline diodes. So there we go. We have a dual inline diode package just by bridging the two AC terminals together. And bridge rectifiers come in many shapes and forms and very small ones, high current one, high voltage ones, low voltage ones. So I have a lot of choice there. It's possible to get some compact bridge rectifiers that can handle quite a lot of current for their size. And because you're effectively putting two sets of series diodes in parallel, you're increasing the amount of current it can handle as well. Not quite double, but certainly a lot more. So this is quite useful because we can get a lot of current handling capability from a very small package. So that's how I managed to make these modules so small, by using a very small bridge rectifier with the AC terminals linked together to give us uh, an inline diode with quite a high current capability. Now granted, I don't need five amps of current for an LED load, but I am interested in very high peak current capability if something goes wrong, user error, or there's a short circuit, then the unit might survive and when a circuit breaker trips. So now I've redrawn the same circuits, but this time with the full bridge rectifiers, um, with their AC terminals linked together. It's effectively the same as using separate diodes. It's just now you have one package that the diodes are contained in, so you can make it more compact, but you can use um, loose diodes if you like. For those of you who don't feel like building the circuit yourself, I might make a few of these modules 
and then put a link in the description so you can try them out for yourself. I think also I need to design a circuit board so that all these things can really compactly fit onto a circuit board. That will be quite cool. If you are interested in any of these Sonoff products featured in the video, I'll leave a link in the description where you can get them from. And you can get a 10% discount if you use my coupon code. So that's about it for this video. You can share it if you like. And don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.